Hi everybody! We're going to work on a really fun technique today. And this isn't my technique. This is something that's been around for years and years and years. Probably back to the Stone Ages when people were putting their footprints or handprints in mud. Um, so we're just going to update it a little bit. And I want to go through first the supplies that we need to, to work on this. And the first thing what we're going to use for our mud is drywall spackling compound. You can buy this at any home improvement store. I've just bought a little like quart container of it. It's about seven or eight dollars. You can buy smaller containers or you can buy larger ones. So that's what we're going to use for our mud. And then you want some type of surface to put that on and you need it to be a rigid surface. You don't want anything that's flexible because you don't want that spackling compound to pop off of it. And you want to give that a good coat of a multi surface sealer. And you could even do two coats because you don't want it to absorb, absorb any of the moisture from your speckling compound when you put it on and cause it to warp. So you need your surface. It can be anything. Um, masonite works really good. The smooth tempered masonite is a good surface. And so you can, you know, just use anything that you have around the house. You don't have to have anything specific. You'll need a water container, and I'm just using like a, a little flat plastic sort of Tupperware type container. It's got about an inch of water in it. We're going to use that to clean off our tools. And then you need things to create your impressions in the mud. And that can be a variety of, variety of things, so I would urge you to look around your house and find anything that looks like it would make an interesting shape. It needs to be something that you can wash in water because once we stamp it in our, our speckling compound, you need to wash it off in your little tray of water. So some things that I've used are, I'll use go through my wood supplies and find little wood cutouts. These all make really good little stamps. And if they're too small to hold and press into your mud, you can put like a little push pin in the back of it. And that'll give you a little stamper. So I've got a little gingerbread, some stars. Here's a little Christmas tree shape. Um, there's like a, a little flower or sunburst. You can use um, any some hearts I've got little squares. There's a, a larger size heart. So, you know, just go through your wood supplies and little wood shapes and those make fun stamps. Other things that work well are buttons and I collect buttons here. And just look for ones that have like a pretty pattern in them. This one's got like a little engraved edge around the end. That would make a nice shape. Um, this one's got like a little um, leaf pattern in the middle. That would make a good little impression. Let's see, just going through. This one has like kind of little triangle shapes. We could try that. Here's one with a, a little rose in it. That might be kind of small, but we can try it. So anyway, just go through, you know, old buttons and things. Those, those make really cool little stamps. And that one's got like a little circular pattern that's kind of fun. Other things are, you can actually use stamps. So I've got a collection of little stamps here that go on this clear block little words and things so you know depending on what you if you want a theme to your your impression piece you can use certain little words I've always collected odds and ends at flea markets and there's some Christmas ones so flea markets and I used to have a collection of these little printer blocks these are like little copper printing press blocks that they use, used to use probably back in the late 1800s and early 1900s to actually print books and newspapers and things. Those would go on a, a printing press and be inked and stamped. 
So I guess they're kind of the precursors to our little acrylic and rubber stamps. So I've got all kinds of these little, I collected a lot of cats. So a lot of my little designs are cat designs. I even have um, my, the letters of my name, which I used in the one that I've shown as a, a sample. I'm trying to find, like here's an H. Uh, thread spools work really well, the old plastic ones. If you take the paper off the end, you'll find different ones have fun little patterns. I had another one here. My workspace is getting a little bit cramped, but I had another one with a, uh, with more little cutouts um, that I'll use. So those work well. Old doilies are, you know, these aren't even old. These are just little ones I bought at a craft store. You can use these, you know, it doesn't hurt to get them wet, so, you know, you can use them to make impressions in your spackling. Old jewelry. I went through my jewelry box and found a bunch of just old costume jewelry that I thought had nice relief patterns that I thought I'd try to use. Let's see, here's a, here's a lizard that I thought was kind of cool and I was going to try that and see how that works out. There's an elephant. Um, a metal ruler. That works really well. You can make print lines in your piece and it also is good to, if you want a little edge, you can use it to scrape the, the speckling compound off the edges of your board to make a little indention that if you wanted to frame it and put it in a frame, it's not too thick on the edges. So these are just some different things that, you know, I, I wanted to show you that we could try using. And if you have something at home that, you know, I encourage you to just go around your house and see what you have. So the first thing we're going to do is, as I said, I've put a nice heavy coat of sealer on this. Let it dry. I don't care if it's sanded or not. Uh, it's a little bit... The, grain of the, the wood's raised a little bit and that will be fine because we're going to put the speckling all over it and my theory is that the little fibers from the wood will adhere more to the speckling and actually adhere it to the surface better once it's dried. So to put the speckling on you'll want, you'll see my old grubby speckling knife but like a putty knife and you want something that's fairly good size so you don't have too many ridges in your paint. I've got this big one that's probably about six inches and then I've got a little plastic one that's maybe two, two and a half or three inches. So let's get started putting some speckling on our surface. Okay, so we've got our board, we've got our speckling compound, and it's good to have a smaller knife if you've got a small container of speckling compound because obviously this big one is not going to go in there very well. So I'm going to scoop out some of this. And you can see it's just kind of a putty consistency and I'm going to smear that across the board. You want it about probably an eighth of an inch no more than a quarter of an inch thick. And you just want to smooth that out as much as possible. I think I'm going to need some more. You could start with a smaller piece to start if you want to just try this. Obviously I have some dried putty on here that's making a couple little grooves. I've actually been painting my house and patching some of the walls with this knife and the putty so it does double duty. You can use it for an art project or you can do it to prepare your walls before you paint them. A smaller knife is also good to scrape off the piece and put it back on so you can work it out a little bit more. You might have to pick the board up Kind of like icing, putting icing on a cake. 
You can also see that depending on the size of the project you're going going to do, you don't want to get too small a container because it takes quite a bit. And if you buy the kind that doesn't isn't pink to start with, it's cheaper. So I'm almost covered now. I have a little spot here still to do. So I just want to smooth that out as much as possible. Not have too many ridges in it. I'm going to sit my knife aside. You probably should maybe have a bucket of water or something. I'm going to save some of that and put it back in my container. Close your speckling compound back up and seal it so it doesn't dry out. And you can reuse this for a long time with more proje projects. Okay, for the, our Halloween Impressions project, I'm using a different board than I showed in our demo. And this is a larger masonite board that I covered with regular spackling compound. And I'm just cleaning off the edges with my wet finger, just making a just about an eighth of an inch edge along each border of the board, wiping off the spackling compound. This would clean it up if I ever wanted to put it into a frame. Now with a metal ruler, I'm going to divide and make some borders around the edges. So I've got a metal ruler, which I've wet with water, and I'm just going to make a straight impression about two inches in from each edge. This will give us a little framed area in the middle, and we're going to make our impressions in the outer border. Also, the speckling compound was a little bit too wet, so after I do this, I'm going to stop and let this set up for a while. I want it to a consistency that is sort of like Play-Doh, so that if you push your finger into it or, you know, something you're making an impression with, it doesn't pull out and cause the speckling compound to peak. You want it to make the impression and stay flat, not pull back out with whatever tool you're making your impression. So I'm going to finish this last edge around my frame, my little borders, and now you see we've got sections and we'll come back and finish this up in the next video.